Looks like we made an order. Find out today what I picked up here on The Culture of Currency. That's right, folks. Went to Atmex, picked up some things, and I also picked up a board, finally, so that I can highlight channel stickers. So if you have a sticker you want to send to me, please do. P.O. Box 1086, Salina, Texas, 75009. Now let's get into the good stuff. So silver was around $24 when I ordered. Uh, I ordered two months worth. I do a $100 challenge, so that's $100 per month or somewhere around that. Uh, so all of these coins I got for roughly $200 for two months worth of ordering. January is not the best for new designs. They usually are later in the year, and so I did have to get a little creative, and I went and bought some older coins that I've always wanted. Uh, so look forward to doing those videos as well as some of these newer one ounce coins that I got. First thing first, we are looking at the Lost Tigers of Cambodia coin. This is a nation that I did not have in my collection, and of course I love tigers, so it was a must-have. We see an awesome depiction of Cambodia here on this side. Uh, can't wait to dive deep into this one. I picked it up for $33.77. Next, we have another coin from the Royal Australian Mint as they do the Australian Zoo series. I already have the cheetah from this series and absolutely love it. So this is a Sumatran elephant. So you see a cluster of elephants here on the back. That'll be a fun one to do as well. I really enjoy doing the Australian Zoo cheetah coin. And I picked that one up for $34.08. Now we have the Republic of Chad. We've got a few coins from Chad. Uh, all are awesome. This right here is going to be the Republic of Chad Mandala Crocodile. I already have the Warthog and the value has shot up on it. This features a crocodile which I do not see very often in coins. And I love alligators and it's basically the big brother of the alligator so I had to have this one. This is the Mandala Crocodile. Next, we have the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has such a cool obverse. When we get to the reverse, we will see a coin that I normally would not get into. This is a dinosaur coin. Um, I just have never been big into a lot of the dinosaur coins. However, this was always my favorite dinosaur growing up, which is weird because it's not one with sharp, pokey teeth, but rather one that eats plants. So I'm probably in the minority there. But it is a Parasaurolophus, and I don't understand why I always fell in love with this dinosaur, but I did. Maybe it's the duck bill. I don't know. Uh, but I love the depiction here, and if I'm going to get a dinosaur coin, I'm going to get my favorite dinosaur, so here it is. I picked this up for $34.81. Next, we have a coin from the EC8. This is Anguilla. This is going to be the Silver Eel. And I picked this one up because, despite of my putrid hate for some of the coins that have come out of Anguilla, this one right here is done right. It's also a rare species that we don't see very often, so I thought it was very, very nicely done. So it'll be fun to dive into this one, but this is what a Caribbean coin should look like. I picked that up for $34.29. Next, we have a very exciting old coin. This is a 1893 Columbian Expo silver half dollar. This was average circulation, and I picked it up for $20.82. There is so much history in this coin, and I cannot even begin to tell you how excited I was when I looked into this and saw that it was there. Uh, I had to pick it up. This is probably one of the most exciting coins in my entire collection. Uh, go and get one of these if you haven't got one already. This will be a fun video to make. Mm -hmm. 
Up next, we have a very simple coin that basically all of you have, but I wanted a BU version of this coin so that I had kind of a high standard to look at. This is a BU Mercury Dime. Uh, I will be doing a video over this coin. I've already done one over a Mercury Dime, but it'll be going over kind of the grading process and all that kind of stuff and what to look for. So now that I have a specimen type coin, we can really dive into your Mercury Dimes to figure out kind of where they are. I picked this up for $10, just some change over $10. It was like $10.40. Next we have a Canadian 5 cent coin which is much smaller than the American in this particular year. This was a coin that I picked up for $16.66. It's a much older coin, one that I did not have and one that I thought was very interesting. So that was a cool one that I'll be able to do a video over. Uh, so look forward to that. And now we have for $10.41 a 1935 Buffalo Nickel. This is AU or almost uncirculated. I have not done a video over Buffalo Nickels, so I am very excited to dive into that and bring you some interesting things that not many people cover, uh, as well as just look at a specimen that's much better than the other ones I have. So <laughs> it'll be a much better view for you. And our last coin is a 1945 Canadian Steel Victory. This is a nickel. Uh, it's also BU. Got it for ten dollars and forty-one cents. This is going to be the V for Victory in World War II. So I thought this was a fascinating coin that I needed, as the ending of World War II was a victory for the world, and it will be a really, really good video to kind of go over that. So. Really cool overall uh, pickups, and I'm very, very excited to bring this stuff to you. That's going to wrap up our unboxing. Please remember to subscribe as we hit 850. We'll have a giveaway of that North Star Mint round. And please remember, like always, to stay classy and current with the culture of currency. Mm -hmm.